Hi, I'm James Franklin, a mathematician and philosopher at the University of New South Wales. I'd like to tell you about a new direction in the philosophy of mathematics, Aristotelian realism. The cover image of my book, An Aristotelian Realist Philosophy of Mathematics, shows the great rose window in Strasbourg Cathedral. It illustrates symmetry, one of the basic mathematical features of the world and one that is easily perceived. You see the symmetry of a rose window, or the symmetry of a very regular solid like a dodecahedron. We see symmetry, it's real. If you have a noticeably asymmetrical face, don't go into politics, because it's very obvious on television. You may have been subliminally annoyed because my collar is askew or asymmetrical. Even animals can see symmetry, even bees can. According to Aristotelian realism, mathematics is about aspects of the real world, such as symmetry. In contrast to older approaches, like Platonism and nominalism, it starts from applied mathematics. It says that mathematics is not about abstract objects, like numbers and sets, as Platonism says, nor is it just a language of science or manipulation of symbols, as nominalism says. Instead, it is a science of the real world just as much as physics and biology are. Another of the basic mathematical properties of the world is ratio or proportion. We directly see that too, as in these classic diagrams of different body types, types that differ in the ratio of width to height. Those real world properties, like symmetry, ratio, continuity, are, according to Aristotelian realism, what mathematics is about. Before we go further, let's take a minute to stand back and ask why be interested in the philosophy of mathematics? Not many people care about the philosophy of accountancy, say, but mathematics has always been the subject of a lot of philosophical interest. Why is that? One reason is that mathematics plays a role in one of the biggest wars in philosophy, that between empiricism or naturalism on the one hand and rationalism on the other. According to naturalism, science gives the full story about how the universe is. There's just material stuff, and where animals are a little bit smarter than the rest. According to rationalism, there's more to it than that. Our intellects have a unique ability to penetrate beyond appearances and understand the necessary structure of reality. Now mathematics has always been Exhibit A on the rationalist side. It seems that in mathematics you can just sit in the armchair and think, and the results must apply to reality. 2 plus 2 is 4, and out there, 2 rabbits and another 2 rabbits make 4 rabbits. If you put 2 rabbits and another 2 rabbits in a box and later find 5 rabbits in there, you don't say that in rabbit arithmetic 2 plus 2 is 5, you conclude they must have bred. Aristotelian realism agrees with that rationalist thought. But the standard options in the philosophy of mathematics undermine it in different ways. Theories in the philosophy of mathematics are divided as follows. Either mathematics is about something, that's realism, or it isn't, that's nominalism. Both realism and nominalism come in different versions. Realism can either be Platonist or Aristotelian. Platonists believe that mathematics is about a special, non-physical world of abstract objects, numbers, sets, groups, etc., distinct from the real physical world. It's a natural theory, and when you're doing mathematics you can easily feel like that. But it has some well-known problems, such as explaining how applied mathematics does tell us about this world. Aristotelian realism, by contrast, says that mathematics is about features of this world, such as symmetry and ratio. The names Platonism and Aristotelianism come from the ancient, more general dispute between Plato and Aristotle. As symbolised in Raphael's painting, The School of Athens, in the Sistine Chapel, Plato, that's him on the left pointing up to the heavens, looked beyond this world for the truth 
while Aristotle on the right gestures downwards, indicating that truth is found realised in this world. Let's finish with a couple of simple mathematical examples that illustrate the Aristotelian realist philosophy. Consider two rows of three stars, one above the other. That's two times three equals six stars. Now consider them as three columns of two. That's three times two. It's the same lot of stars, just divided into parts differently. So we see that two times three equals three times two. In fact, we see not only that two times three is in fact three times two, but that two times three must be three times two. As the rationalists maintain, we do have insight into a world of necessities. But necessities in this world, the truth applies to the very physical stars in front of us. One last example is an old classic of mathematics from the 18th century. The citizens of Königsberg often walked over the bridges of their city as in the diagram. Top and bottom are the banks of the river, there are two islands in the middle, and seven bridges connecting the four land areas as shown. The citizens found that it was very difficult to walk over all the bridges once without walking over at least one of them twice. How about we start on the top bank and try this? No luck there. We'll pause for about 15 seconds while you trace around in your mind's eye and see if you can do any better. The great mathematician Leonard Euler studied the problem. He proved that the citizen's hunch was right. It's impossible to walk over all the bridges just once. That's an impossibility, a proved impossibility, not about some abstract idealization or model, but about the real arrangement of bridges in the real city. Now that is mathematics. For further information and replies to some standard objections, such as isn't mathematics about idealizations and what about properties that may not be realized in the physical world like infinities, see the website of the Sydney School in the Philosophy of Mathematics and the book An Aristotelian Realist Philosophy of Mathematics.